And now let's move on to the last presentation of the Frogans Technology Conference number one. And we spoke a bit about it. We put a lot of pressure on your shoulders, Ronald, during the conference. We heard that Romuald will tell us more. He's better placed than I am to know. So Romuald, the next step of the project with priority registration period for trademark holders. So we're talking about uh, making the Fogans technology available above and beyond making it downloadable, resources available, like the technical specs or organizing the Fogans Technology Conference to explain what the Fogans technology is all about and what are the opportunities it will offer to the entire ecosystem. OP3FT must reach out to the ecosystem to promote awareness and to show it the role it plays. And it's then, it is then up to it to choose how, if it will occupy it or how. Romuald, can you first tell us your role at OP3FT? Because I know that you have been working for years on the Forgans project. Thank you, Joe Emmanuel. Could you just put up the slides? Hello, good evening, everyone. To begin with, I will speak about the term that Mathieu Vey just used to speak about. I will speak about role, but more about missions, assignments, as a part of our assignment to promote. Do you use the term adventure? Because the mission we're working on, and I'm not the only one, you must have seen that for the past two days, we have a whole team of lawyers, technicians, technical staff, and many people working around this project. This entire adventure seeks to serve an ecosystem and all those who may be led to use Forgan's technology. This adventure may be conceived of thanks to the fact that Fogan's technology is released as an open standard, the internet that can be used free by all. This is very important in our mission to promote. We're not there to promote business. We must there be there to serve. It's an exciting mission, and the entire promotional team enjoys this work because our job every day is to go and see all of these players and to speak to them about technology, enable them, help them to understand. It's not simple. We have seen that for the past two days. Uh, so that they can use it and make the most of it. Our mission is articulated around these three dimensions, allow people to understand, use, and make the most of technology. It's an exciting job for several reasons. Quite simply, because the feedback, and we'll certainly come back to that later on, is excellent for two reasons. The first, and we saw that earlier, with respect to usage. When you see trademark holders, or when we speak with developers, designers, and we speak about the Forgan site, and that they can, can take on any shape, a logo, a bottle, it produces tons and tons of ideas. So the power provided by this publishing technology is a source of inspiration for the people we meet. The second point that is exciting about our job is the strength of this address, the power of the address, and we'll come back to that certainly later on. It is also one of the most interesting jobs is that we come in with innovation. In so doing, and by speaking about it with people, it's always difficult, but very interesting, because we have very different reactions, responses to innovation. And if we were to come back to Alex's presentation earlier on the small step forward to adapt 
technology to your job. It is really a small step, but the potential is exceptional. If you take the example of a designer, it's a small step because they're still be doing their job, meaning proposing creativity, usages, so their core business won't change, but they'll have a new tool enabling them to develop huge potential for creativity. I counted twice and never found the same number of boxes. If you can find it, I do love this tonight. But you have over 60 um, jobs represented. Our job that started some weeks ago, our challenge is to enable all these businesses to understand Fogan's technology and how they can use it in their business. Thank you, Romuald. I don't work with you at all, and I don't have a clue about your job, so I know that you're trying to bring together all of these people in a single room and to speak to them in one go. I'm mistaken, of course, because just keeping them on the slide that wasn't obvious, making them hold on the slide. Now, releasing Fogel's technology is done gradually, over time. Can you tell us? about how the Fogel's technology is released and how you reach out to players. Because even if you wanted to, you couldn't go and speak with everyone, could you? Well, it's true that release is essential. Because at OP3FT, in all three countries, we have a challenge of how to promote. OP3FT has been thinking about this for many years. We have reached several realizations. First of all, a new internet layer, based on what we saw yesterday. And this is not something that is common. We have very few uh, referentials to know what is the right method for successful introduction. What we do every day is not to find the right method, the good method, but the best method. That's my first point. Secondly, with respect to introducing an open standard representing such huge challenges, we must understand all of these businesses. If OP3FT cannot assimilate, what are the challenges for a lawyer's firm in China, Peru, the United States? Or what are the challenges for a brand in Africa or Russia? What are the challenges for researchers around the world in these boxes? We cannot be consistent in what we say and meet their needs. There's a lot of work to understand these challenges and the links that may exist, not just the butterfly effect, but the entire ecosystem is linked. So we constantly carry out uh, research on that. The second point is that if we introduce technology massively, immediately, we would have difficulties being understood. So for us, the challenge consists in federating a community. And this is what we have been doing through this conference, for example, to reach out to each player and explain to them to, have, to, to try to educate, to explain what they can do with this technology in their business and how, if I'm an association, an individual, an organization, non-profit making company, a big company, how can I exploit this technology and publish a new site, propose new services to do new things? So given all of this, we have adapted uh, release sequencing. It's not there for people to wait intentionally. That's not what we want to do. We have set up a sequencing for release consistently. And here's how. We will gradually roll out the technology because through this gradual rollout, we will be publishing all the resources that will be made by and by, gradually. Next slide, please. And therefore, these resources, as and when they are produced, we can publish them. 
The release sequence, I'll come back to that later on to explain it. It's important because all of the teams talking since yesterday, legal teams or technical teams, they have been working based on the sequence for releases. I may be um, moving a bit too fast with respect to your question about trade mark holders, but I can see that the entire team is fully mobilized to understand the challenges facing these players to create resources that they can use in their business. Once the resource is ready, and for the specialists, you saw the EDRPF produced recently, or the IFAP specifications, UDRPF, that's the procedure for resolving disputes in connection with Forgan's addresses that Thomas spoke of yesterday. Yes, and I will say a few words about that later on, I believe. So that was... Well, we often hear a question when you present our technology. When will it come out? The release has started already. If you go on the Forgan's website, you find a lot of things. You find a lot of documentation, be they technical or legal, promotional, so that you can get a grasp of the what's going on. And we are available for all those who will be working on this project to help them. We will continue during the release to provide our assistance. She spoke about, uh, well, as we said, the Forgan sites are not resolvable for the time being. Well, I've been working every day with you. These are adjustments. I know that if you speak with trademark holders and associations, or law firms, you come back with feedback. We go to R&D. It's a bit like producing spe technical specs. You must always adapt to the needs of the various targets so that the production can be exploited uh, in time once it is made available. I understand that you can't really give us a specific date for releasing the technology or the sequencing. But can you tell us about the main milestones for releasing for GANS technology? Of course, to come back to what was said, when you speak with the various stakeholders and you carry out your promotional exercises, there are three factors that you must always think of constantly. And the teams are always mobilized on that. The first factor relates to feedback from the community, from users, with respect to the various components we offer them. Alexi spoke earlier about the various user tests that were carried out. We also, at an early stage, speak with various stakeholders representing the ecosystem to get their feedback and to adapt our resources depending on their feedback. That's the first po point. Secondly, this is a constantly changing environment, especially for the Internet. The new JTLD program that emerged in 2008, we had to adjust, adapt a way of presenting things, a way of educating the various stakeholders based on the new GTLDs. The new GTLDs also enabled us to bring in an additional security level. Thirdly, constantly adjusting at team level in production. That too must be taken into account in our release. These are the three important factors. One concrete example by way of a transition to our release sequencing relates to the priority registration period for trademark holders. We think or we believe that the success of Fogan's technology will be based on use. The end users and the site publishers who can benefit from this, these new communication channels to offer new services and new usages. The entire team is deeply convinced of that.
A first reflex would be to say, since the success of technology lies in the hands of these end users and these usages, let us first give for Gunsplayer and the FSDL. That's the reflex that anyone could have. But when you study the history of the Internet or the success and failures of technologies around the world, we realize that this is not necessarily the right reflex, or it may be called into question at any rate. When it comes to introducing an open standard, we realize that the fact of having a stable legal environment, sustainable in terms, in terms of use, and to be structured as a non-profit making organization, offers guarantees for success for the overall community. Today, a developer, I could take other examples, but let's say any uh, corporation that's normal before launching out into a technology will validate some points. Is it a sturdy project, stable? Are the resources uh, stable? The legal environment does it lend protection? So through contacts for years with the overall community, this is how we took key decisions to establish a legal foundation that is solid for subsequent development. The last example to date is in relates to the priority registration period for trademark holders. We speak about sequencing. We decided to use it based on these small blocks, over 60 businesses. It's quite significant to dedicate the first uh, release sequence for this category of technology users. Why did we make this choice? There's several reasons for that. The first is because of what Jerome said yesterday about the values compliance team, who spoke about the history of the internet. And they explained to us the intimate story uh, between a brand and the internet. The web was founded in 89, and the famous UDRP procedure enabling a brand to have a means of recourse to resolve disputes appeared in 99, 10 years later on. So the new extensions, the experts in the room dates back to 2002, and then we had the program for new extensions in 2008. So there's a special story about brands, trademarks. If we do not attach a lot of importance to that, and if we do not anticipate on the feedback we can get from those trademarks, ultimately, we may miss out on one of the players in the ecosystem, and yet our terms of reference specify that we must take into account the needs of all the players. Plus, we know that when we introduce new identifiers on the internet, potentially we can in introduce biases. P, of course, or P3FT must take into account such potential problems and take the right steps and provide the right tools so that the part stakeholders can anticipate on the introduction of this technology. Yes, you, uh, this new program, GTLDs, um, made um, communication rather complicated because myself, I'm a perfect example. Uh, of getting confused between uh, uh, dot frogans uh, domain name and a uh, uh, dot uh, uh, frogans site. So when you have people who deal with you who have little time, it's, you, this educational effort is very important because you need to teach them you're working for the p general interest. So I would like you to tell us about the this um, period that. That is a priority reservation um, period for the uh, brand holders. Yes, so the confusion between the new GTLTs and the program addresses, yes, it's true in a way, but and no in another. But it adds further complexity because we arrive in a changing environment where the various brands and uh, uh, stakeholders of the legal uh, ecosystem are working a lot on this uh, and are also working to of educating the players, so we're it's it's a 
bit of a mm, uh, confusion that we need to find our way through. But uh, at the same time, a domain name addresses a, 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 a website, whereas a fragrance name addresses a fragrance site. So in terms of usage, the difference can be made uh, quite easily. And the potential of an address for a startup, for an entrepreneur, for whoever wants uh, to use them in the world of strength, the sheer strength of this address is so uh, is so blatant that we can make ourselves understood. The uh, the priority period of, for registration for the holders of brands, uh, this is something, of course, we need to uh, clarify. It's aimed to, to help the brands anticipate the emergence of the fragrance technology. For this, OB3FT has uh, planned a different, different tools. One of the tools uh, is the uh, fragrance technology uh, user policy. Uh, Thomas told you about this yesterday. You have the video available on the internet now. The second tool is the UDRPF. Uh, that is the, and Thomas also told us about this. It is uh, the possibility for a brand in the event of a dispute to have a recourse uh, to uh, resolve the problem. The third is this priority registration period, um, which uh, is uh, to give a brand for a certain period of time um, a means to register a dedicated fragrance network under the brand name. Uh, so talking about this period, uh, registration period, we have two challenges. First, to inform a maximum number of uh, brand holders, owners. Uh, our mission is not to uh, do a kind of a marketing of fear, uh, inciting people to uh, take a Frogan's uh, uh, name uh, for fear that uh, authors could take it. No, it's just, just to say that this te publication technology uh, addresses a number of needs, you can have new usages, have a new communication channel, and if you want to anticipate the emergence of this technology, you can register your, your brand. So it's about information. The second challenge, which uh, is addressing one of the four um, pillars of the uh, fragrance technology, is, to, um, is for innovation and to create a new ecosystem on top of the fragrance technology. And this mission, which is to promote the emergence of an ecosystem in this registration chain of a fragrance address is represented by this job. This is FCR account administration, this task. And an FCR account administrator is someone or an entity which, at a given point in time, decides to get position on the fragrance technology across the registration chain of a fragrance address and say, I want to propose for my customers, for third parties, the possibility of registering under their name a fragrance address. Uh, do you mean in the name of their customer? That's right. So for this purpose, they will, as we'll see later on, uh, turn to the uh, FCR um, uh, operator, uh, whose mission it is to technically and commercially operate the database of the fragrance addresses, and they will be able to open an account and uh, then register the fragrance addresses. The challenge around this task is to go and see the main stakeholders, the uh, registrars, the lawyers, the consultants, and so on, and tell them uh, that the, uh, there is a new fragrance address and to see with them the various strategies that are possible around this uh, fragrance address. And there are many of them. And to federate around this uh, task. Um, now, uh, uh, this period has already started, and um, it's already possible to get position as an uh, FCR account administrator, um, because as an initiator, I mean OP3FT of the ecosystem, the idea is not to uh, put ourselves uh, uh, in the fr on the front stage, but to uh, show that these people uh, generate innovation, employment, and services, and we have been, we have two FCR account administrators with us tonight, and I will ask David, David and Jean-François to join us on stage so that they can introduce themselves.
Can you please uh, introduce yourself? So, uh, David, first, you know the Frogans Project as you uh, work um, and have been following this um, project for a number of years. My question uh, is in two um, phases, in a way. I would like you to introduce yourself and your activity. And, um, and, and say why, um, uh, as part of this uh, new technology and the chain of uh, programs addresses, you decide to position your consultancy on this uh, FCR account administration. Thank you, Romuald. In fact, let me start uh, by taking a different angle. I will not introduce myself, but take the name of the uh, consultancy, which uh, comes from uh, the English witty, you know, uh, ethics uh, for uh, communication. And so we didn't invent anything. Um, consultancy was established just before Frogans, and uh, following uh, the, the, the Frogans uh, uh, adventure, it was quite natural that we uh, would take this role. Now, talking about our consultancy, I'm a bit, uh, I've been uh, uh, intoxicated with the internet for almost 20 years. Uh, thank you, Jean Rosa, for reminding me of my age. And also, I am specialized in um, IP and uh, trademarks and the rights of one and zero, which is easier to understand, isn't it? And uh, within the consultancy, I had the uh, department dedicated to the internet, uh, the web, maybe, I could say. Uh, and as, uh, in this context, uh, for the implementation of UDRPF, uh, we um, supported a P3FT uh, in its relation to the trademarks. And now, to answer your question, why did we decide to go um, in this direction? I'd say that I'm like a um, psychotherapist of a, a legal specialist in a way to tell, to, it's a way to say that the internet, the web, and the domain names, uh, I mean, you don't need to be afraid of this, you know, and, and this quite a rational approach about domain names. Uh, for programs addresses, you could have this kind of uh, um, fear, you know. Uh, but so we're here to help people uh, understand that there's nothing to be afraid of, that it's quite simple. And for the more technical part, um, for SCR administrator, it was a way for the cabinet, for the consultancy, to show um, that there's nothing like a registrar uh, for our um, customers, we want to reassure our customers about this. And there's also the um, uh, the fact that why do you want to have a network? What's in it for you, for your brands? Is there any need uh, to do it? But there's no obligation. But you have a benefit in 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 using this addressing, creating sites, and new contents. In a nutshell, that's what I could say about us. Of course, we'll uh, allow some time for questions afterwards. Jean-Francois, you are uh, the uh, head of uh, the ProDomain company. You, your company also um, decided to act as an FCR account administration, uh, administrator for your customers. So could you um, tell us about your company and uh, maybe uh, what are the stakes uh, uh, of this um, programs addressing? Thank you. Well, uh, for us who don't know ProDomain, we are a registrar, that is to register domain names uh, accredited by ICANN, but also FNIL, for the .fr and uh, and, and other domains. So ProDomain is part of the Sistani uh, company uh, group. Uh, it was uh, created in 1999 uh, with uh, various technologies, uh, the CD-ROM, Minitel, and things that you must have known in your days. Uh, remember. So we are um, therefore delighted to um, be on board this adventure as well. At ProDomain, our approach is more towards um, um, uh, legal um, persons or brands, but also public entities such as uh, municipalities um, or 
uh, local authorities to help them manage their domains and the um, dot programs um, is very much a part of a uh, sizzling uh, context uh, with lots of domain names like Sunrise and, uh, and others and it's a real challenge for us to be able to propose the dot email dot club and so on and uh, in uh, educating uh, the, the customers uh, we uh, suddenly emerges the dot programs and we try to uh, make our customers aware of the benefits of uh, uh, registering uh, the dot programs uh, sites and this is why we decided to become uh, FCR account administrators in uh, this approach to be able to offer all the uh, protection mechanisms for uh, the users but this is something we have shared with David for many years to 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 see the domain names and internet addresses not only uh, from a preventive uh, point of view uh, like with the fear factor we're here to put the emphasis on usage usage and, and uh, the enjoyment of the internet in general terms uh, yet yeah, let me take um, uh, this opportunity of uh, having you on stage to of course um, uh, say that any people who would like to register uh, addresses, uh, well, you have uh, early uh, uh, adopters of the uh, FCR account administrator uh, business, so uh, you can turn to them, because it is not our mission at uh, OP3FT to do this, so we want to rather uh, facilitate the emergence of a community of uh, players around this uh, um, technology, and I think there's another company here, Nanshield, I think, who will be also positioned as soon in this area. Before we show you more, do you have any questions at this stage um, about this um, priority registration period? Or any questions from uh, Jean Francois or David Irving? Uh, good evening, uh, Daniel Prof from OP3FT. I'd like to know, I don't, the, the, your customers, uh, what is your, your relationship to the people to, you sell addresses to, whether Frogans or web uh, addresses? How do you approach these people? And how do you convince them if you have to? I mean, do they come to you? Is it a push or a pull uh, approach uh, to act as ambassadors, as we uh, saw with another speakers, uh, another speaker earlier on? Well, concerning the, our customers, I have good relations with them. That's uh, the first point, which is, uh, I mean, uh, seldom the case in this business, you know? Joking. I'm like the Prince Consort, I'm not an ambassador. So, um, our, uh, the, uh, I mean, uh, being an attorney as uh, such is, uh, being an attorney you cannot uh, 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 act as a, as a representative, you know, a commercial representative for customers. We, we, I mean, people are more afraid of us than of Frogan, so we have to go and see them because they would be naturally afraid of seeing us, uh, you know. Uh, when they see us, it's because there's a problem, you know. So we go and see them, we tell them about Frogan's, they react or they don't. But there are some customers from, for whom I'm convinced that there is a benefit for them to uh, know more about this. So I go and tell them about it. Uh, of course, I'm far from being a, a specialist, maybe. Well, should I say? I will suggest them something that I would see as a user, as an ordinary user. I would see a program on this or that, uh, uh, which you are involved in, because this application uh, at the beginning is not very user friendly and if you go on the internet and uh, you use a, a PC or you use a Mac uh, and you log on to reserve something and then you use uh, your mobile terminal to get a new ticket because the application is just unbearably uh, cumbersome but having a network like Frogans is uh, very helpful to make the, the process much uh, smoother to book a knee ticket or something or to present product in particular for pharmaceuticals, veterinarian products where you need more safety 
and health issue where you could um, have some um, selling points which are not about RP uh, or, or no. It's, it's an approach that is very proactive on this particular technology. I have no shares in the province, but but I'm just a fan, you know. I, I have a prototype on my computer. But now, um, Jean-François Poussin, uh, some people came to see us to uh, get their extension. So it could be uh, local authorities, uh, for instance, the Aquitaine region, to have the dot .Aquitaine uh, domain name, Leclerc for the um, retailer, uh, for domain name more generally. Some people turned to us quite naturally. One of the first extensions that came back was dot bike. We got one of the leaders of the water bike in Paris who wanted to have the uh, dot water bike, and, and they were very happy to get it. Some natural requests, like we have an office in Britain, and all uh, the uh, customers want their dot BZH, which is uh, the acronym of Brittany. And there are customers we work regularly with, with whom we will counsel uh, about their business um, a, a big hotel chain that does not uh, reserve its uh, dot hotel uh, n name will be more at a risk than others so um, we we try to make our customers aware of certain challenges of our, for our customers in their respective um, uh, activities business areas uh, but it's quite a busy area anyway uh, what's great for us is that there are innovative uh, uh, projects with this new programs, DOT programs, uh, 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 g helps us uh, uh, give some more novelty uh, to uh, our job. And note in passing that uh, this um, priority registration period is quite short that we have to um, educate the, the, the players and uh, we did so since last December. We uh, spoke at PRAM last December. We have uh, made some publication on the ARP uh, magazine. We were in Hong Kong, uh, uh, Linta, uh, where we um, had some 70 more-ish uh, uh, appointments. So we took part in conference to inform people. Inta, if you don't know, is a worldwide uh, event that uh, gathers some eight thousand more um, players in the intellectual uh, industrial property and the, um, the trademarks law so we were able to hold a seminar to inform them about the ch uh, this new technology and the challenges uh, that uh, may um, follow from this uh, technology so in conclusion I would like you to give them a warm round of applause And unfortunately, I think we lack time to show more, but I'll just uh, briefly what we asked the FCR um, account administrator to uh, beta test for this to be available to the whole community very soon afterwards in the coming weeks. So, just two minutes. This is a platform which allows an FCR account administrator, it's uh, being, uh, it's under B2 test now, to um, register a dedicated programs network. So, you can see it's an interface, which is quite simple, but which requires some um, um, strong business competence, and that's why uh, the FCR account administrators can add value not only in terms of um, advising, uh, but also the administrative part. You can see here uh, that I was able to start a procedure to uh, register a programs uh, network, and it's quite simple. If I have any doubts about the terminology uh, used, I uh, can click here and uh, find the information. So all our technical teams work on this to allow the people working in this ecosystem to propose services to their own customers and further develop their business. And in advance, I will thank uh, David and Jean-Francois for testing this platform for the whole community and the benefit of all. Thank you. Thank you, Romuald. So, so, 
It's a beautiful conclusion. And uh, soon, uh, with the FCR account administrators, it will be possible to register Frogan's addresses with a simple pattern network star sign name, the name of your network, the star sign, and the name of your site. And in the reservation period, it's only possible to register the name of your network. And this network name must correspond with the name of a brand that you own or that you are entitled to use at any rate. Otherwise, it's UDRPF.